I am James Swanick, and today we are doing part three of a three-part series with John Keltner, who is two years alcohol-free today. Yep. And yeah, congratulations, John, first of all. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I interviewed you uh, when you hit 90 days, which would have been in what's that, March of 2019, and then I interviewed you again a year ago today, which would have been December 20th, 2019. Yep. And now, as we're recording this, it's December 20th, 2020. Yes. So if you're listening to the podcast, then I would invite you maybe to go back and just listen into the interview at day 90 and then at one year and then listen to this one at two years. But, John, just to get started, tell us a little bit about you, your story, what you do, uh, where you're from, just to introduce, reintroduce you to our listeners sure. if they haven't heard uh, episode one or two or even if they have. Sure, sure. So I was uh, born and raised down in the Bay Area in, uh, in Northern California and uh, came up to the Sacramento area to go to school. And have been up in this area um, ever since. Uh, professionally, I have always been uh, in in a number of forms, but have always been in uh, sales and mostly technology solutions. And I have um, uh, I have three children, and now three grandchildren. And back in December of two thousand and eighteen. Uh, after many thoughts among with myself and and considerations and uh, sleepless nights and so on, I uh, reached out to you, James. And on December the twentieth, two thousand eighteen, I started Project Ninety. Yeah, for those who aren't familiar with that, Project Ninety is our program which helps folks like John get ultimate power over their drinking. What was your drinking habits when you did reach out to me? So I had been a I had been a regular drinker for many years. Uh, I I kind of do my estimates uh, around for about thirty five years. I was a a uh, daily or almost daily um, drinker, uh, and just felt that I had fallen into bad habit, um, bad uh, rhythm. Um, as far as, uh, as far as drinking goes and it, and it included, uh, mainly just after work, getting, um, going to the bar and, um, spending time there before I came home and, uh, and then on the week drinking on the weekends and so on. Um, and, uh, it had just really gotten to be a little bit too much. And at that point I was very, very tired, um, exhausted. Uh, I, uh, was not healthy. I didn't sleep well. Um, and, and it had caused a number of issues in my life, uh, in terms of my relationships and so on. And at the time I, my son was then 14 years old and, and I really felt, um, a need to, um, get control of my drinking, not only for myself, but as a, uh, as an example for him. So those are my, that was kind of my lead up to it. And just to be clear, you were not and do not consider yourself to be an alcoholic by any stretch of the imagination, correct? No, I don't think so. Um, I've never had any, I've never had any a real physical um, addictions to it necessarily. Uh, and I think that um, I think it, and, and it proved to be through this process, it, it proved to be just a um, sort of a lifestyle and a habit that I had developed um, as opposed to alcoholism in the in a medical sense, I suppose. Yeah, it's funny because most of the people who approach me asking for support or or help, I listen to their stories, and many of the people have convinced themselves that they that they're an alcoholic. And in my view, almost all of them are not. It's just a term that gets thrown around quite loosely, in my opinion. It's just that people have not so much the physical addiction to the alcohol, but a mental addiction. It just becomes this habit that gets ingrained in our psyche. And 
you know, society is all smiling at us as we, as they, you know, offer us their, you know, alcohol. It could be a host of a party wanting to ensure you're having a nice time and trying to be polite. They're saying, hey, would you like some wine? Oh, let's have a drink. And they're smiling. And so over many years of your adult life, it gets ingrained into you that drinking is just something normal. It's just something that people do. And so when people say, oh, I think I'm an alcoholic, I think, well, let's just dig, dig into that a little bit and entertain the idea that maybe you, you do not have a chemical dependency on alcohol, that rather you have a, a habitual dependency on alcohol. Does that ring true for you, John? I think so. Yes. Yes. And, and what I, what I uh, have come to call it is cultural conditioning. And I just had a lot of cultural conditioning, uh, obviously in our American culture, but also through family and friends and uh, classmates and, and so on. And, uh, so it, it's very, one, once you've had an opportunity to kind of step back and see it, um, through another lens or through a, a clear lens, as opposed to, uh, an alcohol filled lens, um, you can really see the level of influence that, uh, alcohol has in our, in our culture. And, um, it's, it now feels good to be have having gotten away from that and be able to see it from the other side. So, yeah, I think a lot of, um, a lot of what people have is more of a, a psychological dependency or a cultural dependency or a habit that they, uh, just need to find out, um, how to, um, get, get some coaching and alternatives on, on how to change that. I want to focus most of our conversation on what life has felt like from year one to year two. Um, and again, I invite the listener, if you want to go back and dig into what life was like first three months, first year, there are the previous episodes of me interviewing John Kelvin are there and available. But just very briefly before we move on, just describe what Project 90 was for you. What was your experience? What did you, what did you feel like you got out of it in those 90 days? And then we'll move on to you know, life in year two. Sure. Sure. So, uh, in those first 90 days, uh, really, I think the keys, the keys for me were, um, the coaching. So, um, the, the tools and the resources that you provided and that Kevin, um, helped with and things like that, the coaching really gave me, um, a, an alternative to what I was, um, experiencing before. And, gave me ideas around how can I, how can I change my mindset around um, not only alcohol overall, but certain situations and, and certain relationships and things like that. And that was very helpful along with uh, the community of people that uh, that was very, very powerful and, and continues to be because I'm, I'm still in contact with a lot of the people that I was in project 90 with at the same time and even some that, um, that came after, um, and so on and my accountability, um, to that group. And, uh, and during that 90 days, and, and I, I think I mentioned this before, but during that 90 days, I didn't, um, I didn't really mention what I was doing to my, to my family, to the people that were closest to me until I had kind of a comfort level that, um, you know, this was all going to go well and so on. And, um, and once I did that, then they became part of my accountability group also. And, and even as of today, I have people reaching out to me and, and saying, uh, congratulations and great job and so on with, uh, with getting to, uh, two years alcohol free. And, and, um, that's been, that's been great. So that, that first 90 days was, um, not nearly as difficult as I thought it would be once you make that choice and that commitment, uh, and, uh, and start moving forward with it. Uh, again, the, the tools and resources that, that are provided are very helpful in getting you through that 90 days. And then it, it all kind of went from there. I'm noticing that you're using the phrase alcohol free instead of sober. You, you haven't used the word sober. You've been using alcohol free. Why is that? Uh, because alcohol free is, uh, to me, it denotes a choice. I, I have made a choice to be alcohol free, the same way a person might make a choice to be gluten free or uh, be a 
uh, vegetarian, I guess, meat, meat free, however, however you would say that. Um, but to me, that that is a, a positive choice that I've made and have committed to, as opposed to being sober, which seems to me has sort of a uh, dark side or a negative side to it and means that I'm maybe I'm sacrificing something or maybe I'm giving up something. Um, and I certainly don't feel that way. So I always like to, to call it alcohol free uh, as opposed to being sober. I, I, that doesn't, I don't think about it that way. Yeah. Uh, just a side note as well. You have a nickname given to you by initially some folks down at your local bar slash pub, as I understand it. What is the nickname that they have given you, John? Yes. Yeah, so I am, uh, I am known now as the soda crayon man. Uh, because when I started with project 90, one of the, one of the things that I really liked about your approach, James, was you didn't, I, I said, you know, I have a lot of friends down there at my uh, local uh, bar and, and people that I enjoy spending time with and, and spend time with outside of the bar. And, um, and I don't want to have to give that up. And, and you said, no, you don't, you don't have to give that up. Let's just give you ways to um, be in those, be in those situations and, and be alcohol free and, and still enjoy yourself and, and so on. So uh, I, I right away um, continued um, certainly not with the frequency that I had before, but I, I would still stop in and see my friends at the, uh, at the local uh, pub and, and, enjoy time with them. And I would just always drink, um, soda with a splash of cranberry and a lime. And, uh, one of my friends said, okay, soda cran man, here you go. And, uh, and that's kind of how it got started and has stuck with me. So tell us a little bit about what it's been like between year one and year two of being alcohol free. And just to, I, I hope summarize what you had shared on our one year uh, interview uh, mm -hmm. a year ago you had said that you'd lost about 20 25 pounds as yep. i understood it you, you you're you look noticeably slimmer you 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 talked about having an improved relationship with uh, i assume must have been then your 15 year old son he must all mm -hmm. 16 if not 16 now yep uh and you just felt more energetic and were sleeping better and you were clearer uh, I think I summarized that pretty well from memory. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what what happened between that point when we last spoke formally like that and this point a year later? Sure, sure. So uh, one of my one of my um, kind of the themes going into um, even into 2019, uh, I had uh, I had I kind of like. Um, themes and slogans and things like that. So my thing was to have more clarity, prosperity, and love. So in 2019, I really uh, leaned into that and, and, um, and through the program and, and through your wellness weekend there in 2019 down in Venice Beach, California, um, I started to really get back to the things that I love. So I have always been a youth sports coach and um, had always had uh, dreams of um, of coaching at higher levels and so on. And so I started to pursue that. I had put together some programs around healthy mindset for young athletes and so on in 2019, started to deliver that. Um, and in 2020, I decided just to continue with that theme. So more clarity, prosperity, and love. So uh, from a clarity standpoint, it just continues to um, continues to go, continues to get deeper and deeper. Even, even uh, if I just reflect on last night, um, I slept very well and I had very vivid dreams, which was something that has continued to get better and better um, uh, since uh, going alcohol free. And, and, uh, so my clarity continues to, 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 uh, increase. And then from a prosperity standpoint, 
Uh, and this wasn't really one of my most important goals, but, uh, you know, I was not performing well at work. Uh, I didn't feel before. And um, over these last two years, I have continued to improve um, at my professional job. Uh, and my income is reflecting that. Uh, and then, um, and also the, uh, my coaching has actually turned into, I now work, um, uh, one of my, uh, projects, I work specifically with a, a high school basketball team, um, here in my area. And that's been just great. Now, with that said, obviously this year has been different because of COVID, um, but I can't, but, and I even have it in my notes as I was thinking back on this is, um, I am so glad that I was alcohol free during this time because, uh, this could have just been a, a absolute mess, uh, if I wasn't in the state of mind that I'm in now, um, and hadn't had that, uh, clarity going into it into 2020, um, because this has been a quite a, quite a year, um, and then lastly is love and uh, my relationships with my uh, my children and my grandchildren and my siblings and and the people that I the people that I um, that I love that are close to me has uh, continued to um, to increase and and become better and better all the time and I will say that in 2020 I have met a wonderful um, woman that um we are uh we are um putting together a very loving relationship so that part of my goals has has come true also that's the biggest thing in 2020 well i don't know most people are saying they want 2020 to end but maybe you want to make it go a little longer john <laughs> well uh every all of this is going to continue no matter what the date says yeah, great. I love that attitude. Uh, a couple of clarifying questions on what you shared. And first of all, congratulations on generating and creating all of that. Yep. Uh, in relation to the romantic relationship with the wonderful woman um, that you are now with, how was the conversation around your relationship to alcohol when you first met her? What was her response and does she drink or not drink at all? Or how do you navigate that? Sure, sure. So um, we had we had met initially in early 2019. Uh, and, and I had started Project 90 at that point. And, um, and I told her about that. Um, now, that's not when we reconnected and started to see each other uh, more seriously. That wasn't until about February of this year. Um, so she already, she, we had already had a kind of an initial conversation. And then when we reconnected a year later, um, I was obviously still alcohol free and she really, um, liked that about me and she's in the health and wellness industry, um, also. And, um, she, she drinks occasionally, but but certainly not a, a habitual drinker, and and uh, she coaches people on uh, you know health and nutrition and so on. So she understands it, and she um, really enjoys the fact that I um, that I don't drink, and that that is never a never an issue because um, she, like many people, and including myself, um, had had issues with um, relationships before that were around drinking. I mean, in terms of uh, when you look back at um, fights and things like that, um, a lot of times they are unfortunately alcohol induced. And um, she really appreciates the fact that I don't drink and we just don't have the issues around that. Wonderful. Um, yeah. When you are dining together or you know eating or whatever, and she has a drink and you don't, how does it feel for you and how does she tell you it feels for her? So, um, huh, interesting. It, it's kind of so, so infrequent that I, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a great answer for that. Maybe she'll have a, a glass of wine occasionally, um, with a meal, but very, very infrequently. 
Um, and, um, she um, never, never goes overboard. Um, there's never a situation like that. And, um, generally she will, um, she will kind of question herself as to, I'm, I, I wonder why I did that. And I, I don't, I don't feel or act judgmental at all. Um, because she's never demonstrated to me any, any issue with it, or we've never had a, a problem with it. So, um, we don't, we don't have, we don't have an ongoing conversation necessarily about that. Yeah. And when she has a drink, and and you're there do you ever feel tempted to enjoy i put the i use the word enjoy in in like parentheses <laughs> um, <laughs> do you ever feel tempted to share a drink with her maybe or or is it just something different no no i don't i just do i just do my thing uh i just i order my soda crayon or whatever my alternative is water water at times um just in this with the same with the same level of uh you know enthusiasm as somebody would order a drink and uh and um and the waitress or the bartender or whoever just i just order it with as much authority as i would if i was gonna have a drink and enjoy myself that way and then i do then i do enjoy myself so uh, no, I don't, I don't ever feel tempted or anything like that. No. And has that way of being, uh, do you demonstrate that way of being, uh, at other functions, like maybe a family get together or a work function? I appreciate 2020 has been a peculiar year where maybe you haven't been socializing as much with other people, but certainly a lot of the the resistance or the fears that people have when they first come into project 90 is how are they going to socialize with people? Like how are they going to navigate people asking them questions about them not drinking? Because a lot of people naturally fear that they're going to fit, that they're going to be judged right. or that they'll have to explain themselves as to why they're not drinking or that they'll feel pressured to drink because everyone else is, or they'll feel rude to decline a host's invitation to drink, et cetera, et cetera. Like there's a number of reasons. Sure. So, um does your way of being change depending on the social situation or is what you just described your partner right now is that pretty much it for all social situations now yeah i would say pretty much it for for all social situations i think what people will find too is that once you've once you've navigated that uh situation one time like with work like with work people, which I've done now uh, for the last couple of years, then uh, they just they just stop asking or stop um, uh, inquiring why that is or any of those type of things. It really goes. It really you get past that pretty quickly. Um, and I know that, like you've said, is if if and here's what I have found also is that people don't really care whether you drink or not. You just have to, you just have to demonstrate that for one time. And then they're like, okay, great. And then, and then what I have found is that, uh, a lot of people will, um, actually ask you, you know, maybe later they'll say, Hey, are you still not drinking? And, and you'll say, no, I'm not, no, still, still alcohol free. And they'll say, oh man, that's great. You know, cause they're, they're starting to keep track for you too. They're starting to cheer, root you on and cheer you on. So, um, no, it, I think if you just, um, get in the, get in the habit of, of, um, ordering your drink the way that you want it, uh, just as anybody would order a drink, people, people get over that pretty quickly and, and, and move on and, um, yeah, it gets, gets pretty, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Just a couple of interesting things. I'm, I'm, I'm writing. Uh, my book at the moment, or what's more accurate is to say, I'm polishing my book proposal at the moment. I've secured a literary agent, and and uh, we're, we're looking to to secure a book deal sometime in 2021. It's all about quitting drinking and the effects of drinking. And one of the interesting studies that that came up as I was researching for the proposal was that in New York State, 25 
percent of all relationships that ended, the, the the folks that they surveyed said that alcohol was the factor, was like the main factor for them splitting up. Uh, and fifty percent of people admitted that alcohol played a factor in any arguments that they had, which is pretty fascinating. Um, so the fact that you, I guess, on the, the flip side of that, you and your current partner. You don't seem, you seem to be having a very harmonious relationship, at least from what you're sharing. Mm -hmm. That just ceases to be an issue, right? Because alcohol is not an issue. Therefore, there are no arguments or very few. And therefore, you're still together <laughs> in New York. In right. New York City, 50% of folks are breaking up or well, 25% are breaking up because of alcohol. Mm -hmm. So you can see the kind of flip side there. Um, yeah. Right, right, and and for us, for us, uh, the um, alcohol not being involved, we're both we're both very present and very open, and can have uh, conversations around anything that we want to talk about, whether it's an issue or not, and those type of things, without uh, it being spiced up by um, by alcohol and and uh you know being intoxicated and so on and and it has been just wonderful i mean i i know that i'm a better person um in this relationship than i have been in past relationships um and honestly yeah. she's just a wonderful person so she's probably oh, the same <laughs> fantastic yeah just a little side note as well. I, I noticed that you mentioned before that your income was reflective of you being um, alcohol free. So I'm assuming what you meant there is that your your income has increased since you went alcohol free, John. Is that what you meant? Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, really, without it, really um, without it being a major focus. In other words, that wasn't one of my main reasons for going alcohol free. Um, although it is one of the benefits that you had outlined for me at the time that that could be uh, potential there. Um, and I, I, that first year, I didn't really track it, but um, I probably was up 25% in terms of my income. And then this year, even, even with COVID um, I'm still up another 20% over last year. Um, wow. And, you know, that's just really, I would attribute it to um, being again, more present, more focused, um, Mm. And more intuitive, you know, in sales, uh, it's important that you um, really have your wits about you. And even in your off hours that you're, you're thinking about clients and their needs and what you can do for them and so on. And um, this, you know, being alcohol free gives you more time and more clarity to do that. And things, things tend to come together a little bit easier and a little better. Um, and, and there's more flow. Um, and, um, that has proven to be the case and, and yes, my, my income continues to increase. Yeah. During my research for the book, I came across a university of Oxford study, which took tests to measure memory, reasoning, and verbal skills. And what they found was that even moderate consumption of alcohol often leads to disorganized thoughts and confusion making it hard to focus on something like work. Um, the study also found that the amount of shrinkage in the hippocampus, which is the brain area associated with memory and reasoning, was related to the amount that people drank. So a person's ability to carry out their work to the standard expected by their employer, for example, or that they expect of themselves, maybe they're an entrepreneur or business owner or in sales like yourself, you know, a person's ability to carry out the, their work to that high standard can be severely compromised by even a modest amount of alcohol. You know, even if the person is not actually intoxicated by alcohol, you know, at work or all or, or the night before. Then, of course, you've got workers who, you know, have headaches or hangovers the following day. Maybe they, they take sick days. Uh, and this can all reduce someone's ability to work effectively. They've also done studies, John, that show that the toxins from alcohol stay in your body. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Most of the toxins from a small class of our system 
for between seven and 10 days. And some of the toxins, they've even found evidence of still being in the body 90 days after mm. you have just one glass of alcohol. They, they take it, they've taken a strand of someone's hair, put it under a microscope, and they can still detect toxins from a single drink 90 days earlier, which is just astounding. So yeah. when you then share that you have increased your income it sounds by on average 22.5% year over year the past two years. That seems to be reflective of the fact that, you know, if you are alcohol free and you're not feeding yourself those toxins, you just work better. You're more productive. You're more efficient. You have Absolutely. greater clarity. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you seem to be provide great anecdotal evidence, I guess, of that. Right. Well, and I, and I would just add that I, I really, uh, a lot of it had to do, especially initially, was how much time I got back um, from uh, eliminating alcohol uh, from my uh, life and my habits and so on. Because I, what I didn't realize before was just how much time I was spending, you know, planning, planning to drink, you know, I mean, just as far as my uh, my thoughts and my focus and things like that, you know, it'd get to be three or four o'clock in the afternoon and my mind would go to, oh man, can't wait until five o'clock or can't wait until I'm headed home or whatever. And then, so that, you know, things would start then. And then I would obviously go and drink. And then there were just a lot of mornings when I was not uh, at my, <laughs> at high energy uh, level. And I w would waste a lot of time then too. And uh, I regained all that time back mm. and have been able to uh, translate it into, um, you know, into better, better work and doing the things that I love um, in terms mm. of uh, spending time, spending quality time with my, uh, with my children and my grandchildren and, um, you know, recreational things that I love like golfing and fishing and and so on tell me what your family and friends have have told you that they've noticed in you since you've been alcohol free maybe in the last year in particular because th this is not something new now right because most of your friends right. and family I would I would suggest know that you've been alcohol free for a while but what have they verbally shared with you about any shifts or, or perceptions they have of you in this second year being alcohol free? Um, well, from a physical, from a physical standpoint, I continue to get uh, compliments on just that. It looks good on you. You know, uh, whatever, whatever it is you're doing, uh, you look better. I mean, I've, obviously I've lost weight, um, lost a lot of puffiness in my face. I, um, my skin is, is clearer and, and so on. Uh, so from a physical standpoint, I, I get a lot of that feedback continue to, and, um, from a, uh, a mental standpoint, I just get a lot of feedback that, uh, I, my, my energy is better. I mean, around, around other people, my energy is better. And I, and I, I know that I'm, more present and able to contribute in a, in a more positive way or, or a more meaningful way, um, with the people that I'm around. So whether it's, uh, my family or the kids that I'm coaching or my, uh, the people that I work with, uh, they, they have given me feedback that, uh, they appreciate, they appreciate my energy and, and what it is that I'm bringing to the table. And, uh, and so that's, that's kind of what I continue to get, um, in terms of, um, you know, this transformation that, that has occurred for me. And now, of course, it's not just the transformation that's occurred in you, but now it's the transformation that you're helping to occur in others. Mm -hmm. So just to provide context for John is now part of our enrollment team, uh, for project 90. So my business is alcohol-free lifestyle. One of the programs is Project 90, uh, which helps folks get ultimate power over alcohol. And when we have people all over the world um, entertaining the idea of joining us in that 
particular program, they speak to one of our three current uh, enrollment specialists. And John Keltner, who I'm speaking with now, is one of those gentlemen, uh, uh, along with uh, a lovely woman um, named Roseanne, who's been featured on the podcast here previously, and also Russell. Um, and so, you know, ordinarily we might have half a dozen, dozen or so folks we have convers- phone conversations with each day, and John is is fielding many of those calls. So I'm curious, John, well, first of all, just to provide further context, you have helped people around the world enroll in the idea of living an alcohol-free lifestyle. One of those women was Jenny Unglis, and I'm sure she doesn't mm-hmm. mind me mentioning her name because she's been featured on the podcast and gave her name and talk, actually mentioned you about how she spoke with you on the phone. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious, um, a few questions around that, John. Um, what did it feel like to enroll someone like Jenny or someone else and then track their progress as they have now gone to be at least 90 consecutive days alcohol free. In Jenny's case, I think it's cu- she's coming up six months now. Mm-hmm. How has that felt for you to now not just having been coached, but now to kind of be the coach and and to and to create tr- help create transformation in others? Right, right. Well, it, it feels fantastic. Uh, because, uh, it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to describe just the, the, the level, um, of fulfillment or, um, uh, gra- gratitude, I guess, that I, that I had coming through the program and, and getting this, getting this new, this new start on things and so on. And then to be able to turn around and express that to others and, help them to go from where they are now to where they would like to be and get them started on that journey. Uh, it's very fulfilling. It's, it's, uh, it's been wonderful. And, and uh, Jenny, along with the other folks that I've uh, enrolled, it's, it's great to see them um, continuing um, on their journey and to um, see all the benefits and all the positive results that come, come from it. So it's, it's been great. Is there something that you notice? Like, is there a pattern of fear that people share with you on those calls, John? Is there a pattern of situation or circumstance that people mention to you? Like, what what are some of the more common things that folks say to you when they're when they're first coming to us? Because, like, when they're first talking to you, they 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 realize that their drinking is holding them back in some way or form. Mm-hmm. They're wanting to get power over it. What what are the the common stories or, or, or perceptions that you have. Sure. So um, I would say that uh, for the, for the most part, for the most part, one of the most common things that the, is that they're um, they're, they're tired. Um, they have been on this uh, roller coaster uh, for, for a long period of time and they feel alone. And when they reach out, they realize that there is actually uh, resources available and, and people that, um, that can help them. And then they, uh, most of their resistance tends to be around fear, the fear of change, um, maybe the fear of failure, because they think I, I just, I've, I've tried and I can't do it and this might not work and, and so on. And um, what we have found that the most um, the most uh, successful people are uh, they're decisive. You know, they make they make a choice. Um, they get they get involved. They they are coachable, so that they can um, so that they can make a change. And they're resourceful. So whether it's uh, time or money or energy, whatever they need to do, um, they will do it. And uh, the amazing thing with this program is that um, the first of all the success rate, which which you know you can you can quote the exact numbers, but super high success rate, and that once people are in, uh, they just see the transformative qualities of this program and um, start to start to see all the things like I have seen, which is 
you get time back, you get relationships back, you get back the things that you love and, and are able to do. So really it comes down to, you know, decisiveness, coachability, and uh, resourcefulness as you, uh, as you get into the program. Yeah. And if you're listening and you'd like to uh, possibly speak with John directly, you do have an opportunity to do that. You can go to sure. jameswanick.com slash schedule. You'll be invited to book a time there uh, and you'll either end up booking uh, a complimentary coaching call with either John or Russell or Roseanne. Uh, or it might be someone else by the time you listen to this as well. But for the time being, if you'd like to give yourself a 33% chance of speaking to John <laughs> directly, because uh, as you book in the calendar, it kind of randomly picks whether it's John or Russell or Roseanne, depending on their schedules as well. But if you'd like to speak to either of those folks, uh, jameswanick.com slash schedule. Or if you're in the US on a mobile phone, you can text me at the number 44222 and just send me the word project 90. That's just one word, project, and then nine zero. So, John, and if and if any of those folks would like to speak with me directly, in addition to Roseanne or Russell, you can certainly let them know, and I, I would be happy to do that. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, you said you got a few messages over the last couple of days of people congratulating you on two on two years. What, what mm -hmm. were some of the things people said? Were they text messages or emails or phone calls? What were they? Well, so I I do have um, I do have a, a group on Facebook um, that I kind of I kind of put in place for myself from an accountability standpoint that includes um, some of my relatives and friends and and people that um, that said they would love to to kind of follow my journey. So um, so I post there when I'm you know each month kind of on the twentieth and you know, this was month number 24. So it was, um, the messages back were congratulations, great job. Um, you know, keep up the good work, uh, those type of things. So it was, uh, it was really nice and, and, um, yeah, uh, pretty, pretty simple stuff, but it, it's, it's fun to, uh, to keep people involved and, uh, keeps me accountable and I enjoy that. And, and, uh, they're all very encouraging. So I appreciate it. So what's the plan now, John, just so we wrap this up, you're two years alcohol free. And of course, that's not really the main focus here, is it? It's just two years of you living the life that you want to live, I would Correct. say. Yes, it's not so much that you're alcohol free, you do drink, you don't drink. It's really alcohol, being alcohol free just gives you the ability to be able to do what you want in a way in which you want. So you know, what, what, what are your plans for the next 12 months and what is your intention around alcohol as well? Sure. Sure. So, um, well, first of all, what I really like about, and, and I have to give you credit for this, James, uh, as I've mentioned before on these calls is, um, that having made this decision on December the 20th, two years ago, um, it was a great time. Um, you know, and and I would add that too to your question earlier about what do, what is what is a common theme on these calls, and a lot of people uh, attempt to delay a decision. And um, my advice to them would be, if not when, then or if not now, then when, um, and if not this, then what? Uh, because you, when we talked, uh, I attempted to delay, and you encouraged me. Um, to get started then, which was December the 20th. And I did. And I'm really, I'm really thankful for that because it got me through those first holidays um, successfully. And then I was off and running for the new year. So as we sit here today and I look into 2021 and um, I have the next 10 days to kind of uh, determine, okay, what are my goals for um, 2021? And I'm going to stay with the same theme that I've had throughout, which is uh, more uh, clarity, prosperity, and love, and continue to build on the things that have come into my life over these last two years. And what's nice about it is that um, I all I see in front of me is continued 
um, success or joy or peace of mind and so on, um, just in continuing what it is that I'm doing now. And, um, and a part of that, uh, I wouldn't, I, and I wouldn't say a big part because I think that I'm, I I've, I've now changed this lifestyle and I'm just going to continue with it. But a part of that is to remain alcohol free and, uh, and, uh, keep building on these, these successes that I've had since, um, going alcohol free two years ago. And, uh, and, uh, it's just been, it's been great. And I continue that I, I think that will continue. So 2021, no matter what the outside world has in store for us, uh, is going to continue to be, um, good for me just as 2020 has been. All right, well, let's make a date. Same day, 2021, want to have a three-year alcohol-free there, interview? Absolutely, absolutely. Three is <laughs> my favorite number, so I'll be there. <laughs> Before I let you go, let's get you to say into the camera, I'm John Keltner, I'm two years alcohol-free, because we got you to do that on 90 days in one year, and you very yeah. kindly allowed me to sort of clip that that, that video, if you like, and in some of our public-facing marketing. you want to... Look down the barrel and say, I'm John, sure. John Keltner and I'm two years alcohol free today. Yep. Off you go. Uh, I am John Keltner and I am two years alcohol free. Fantastic. Well done, John. Excellent. John Keltner, thank, thank you, you so much for sharing your time. It's been wonderful to catch up with you again. Congratulations. I remember exactly where I was when you enrolled. <laughs> As do I. <laughs> Yes. Uh, this, is, this is a fun little annual catch up so far, isn't it? We'll right. how long we'll, we'll keep doing these. these <laughs> four. I, let's let's keep doing it. I'm all for it. John Kellner, thanks so much. And we'll catch you on the next one. All right. Thanks, James. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my quit alcohol guide, which has helped six figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US, but if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>